All right. So the main item of business is uh, approving the minutes from the last meeting, which had no agenda either. So I assume that the minutes that I circulated were acceptable, but I'll put it to a vote and we'll see. Anybody have any misspellings or other issues with the agenda, uh, with no. the minutes? No. 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 Completely Looks accurate. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 All right. Good. Um, the only other thing, I think the only th other thing that I have to report is that I got an email from, um, I can't remember her name. I can look it up, but the she has the house that's just downstream from that uh, Sovereign Builders uh, storage facility with the new, you know, fancy bridge crossing. Megan West, that's her name. Yes. Uh, so a uh, sinkhole opened up in their driveway and it's pretty much impassable now. Uh, oh. So at this point, I think they're parking out near the road and walking in, but. And that's, Scott, that's the same driveway that we went to see before. Yeah, yeah about before. the culvert, yeah. 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 So I went out and I took a look at it and I told her that I thought that the culvert was compromised and that they were gonna have to replace it. I think they managed to do something to avoid replacing it last time. But the fact that there's a sinkhole means that the water's not really running through the culvert anymore. It's starting to suck some of the fill out and sending it downstream. And uh, so she asked about emergency certification. I said, yeah, we could consider that, but I need you to send me, you know, a description of why it's an emergency, what you're going to do about it, how you're going to protect the, the stream uh, in the process. And then, uh, you know, we can, you know, at the time I thought it was something that might really be urgent and that I was going to be able to, that I would probably issue an emergency certification before I could talk to you all, but I haven't heard back from her yet. So now this is a chance for us to consider it together. Uh, the sinkhole is pretty big. And so I certainly don't think anybody can use the driveway between the culvert and the house. Uh, they seem to be getting by, you know, walking, but um, I'm wondering what the what you folks think about the idea of, of allowing the repairs to be done under an emergency certificate versus, you know, requiring them to file a full notice of intent um, to repair the driveway and replace the culvert. Well, going back, I remember like Monty said, that how many years ago was that that they actually filed with us? Was that for a replacement of the culvert or just repair? of that project do you remember it was a repair it, okay there's there's no sign of the culvert i don't know where it is but um i think they just repaired the driveway and left the culvert the way it was and so you know my message was this time you're going to have to replace the culvert um well, they have i know that's not going to be an easy or inexpensive thing for them um and that's probably why i haven't heard back is they're trying to figure out what they can do, how much it's going to cost, et cetera. Um, can they do like an open, like just avoid the break, like have like a bridge or like an open box culvert? Would they have to go to that with a newer, like with newer standards, Scott, or could they still do the culvert? Well, the they would have to upgrade it beyond what was there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the new sort of minimum design standards are to pass a 10 year storm. Uh, but, in some cases that may even be impracticable because of the cost for some people. So mm -hmm. for us, because it's a limited project, we don't have to stick with the full compliance with the performance standards. We try to do it as much as possible, but that's something we will have to consider when it comes forward. That's what also makes it a little hard to authorize as an emergency certification. You know, I was mm -hmm. thinking they were just gonna have to repair the driveway, not replace the culvert when I talked, when I emailed back and forth with her. Um, so it may be something where we could authorize something at, under an emergency cert that's temporary with the understanding and with the condition that they then replace the temporary structure with something that's more permanent and more in line with this, with the standards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It seems like it's going to be an ongoing issue with storms and stuff. They might be coming you know, if they just repair the, the sinkhole and it comes back and they have to do more and more, you know, more emergency research, you know, certification. They just have to actually come back and do a whole review. 
Yeah. And there's a whole sandbar just downstream of the crossing where all oh. of that fill material got deposited. So it's not good for the stream to have that driveway washing out every couple of years or so. So, you know, because this will probably come to me well before, I'm assuming well before our next meeting, are you comfortable with me issuing an emergency certification with the understanding that either they're going to have to try to meet the standards with the emergency work, or they're going to have to do something temporary until they can come back with an NOI for a more permanent solution? Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. I'm okay with that. Yep. Okay. Um, can we put any time constraints on that? Yeah, we probably should. Um, it's summertime when it was. Otherwise, possible. the temporary becomes permanent. Until yeah, I know. Yeah. Out. What do you think about six months that they come back within six months with a proposal and a notice of intent? It could be shorter if you want. Yeah, that'd be around August, September. Hopefully, streams yeah. dry by then. Yeah, that makes sense. Six months. Yeah, of course, if we permit it in August and September, then they won't actually be working on it until September, October. So we could say, you know, that we want something by the end of June so that there's July and August in which to do the work. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just in case. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the only item of business that I have um, other than the minutes. Does anybody else have anything that we should talk about? Besides I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to just let you know about the housing committee. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I was asked to represent the um, conservation commission on the housing committee while they produced or we produced a housing production plan, um, and that's done. If I didn't say already, it was approved by the state, so that is done. All right. Um, but they asked me to stay on, and I said yes, so I'm going to stay on. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> you're the one that hates committees. Now you're on a couple of them, man. Eh? I know. Well, I was also on the uh, cultural council, but I quit that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I just wanted to let you know that that had happened. And um, if I'll just keep an eye out for anything that um, involves wetlands, and then I'll ask Scott what I should do. <laughs> and go back to them. And, um, and also I wanted to let you know that uh, right now what's going on is the, um, the planning board drafted a, um, a new bylaw for the town called the uh, community housing bylaw. It, it would be a new use of land that's not in the bylaws currently. Um, mm. And it would make it easier to produce affordable housing, community housing on a small scale. And um, we worked really hard on it. Well, the planning board um, drafted it. We gave them feedback. They redrafted it. We have now approved it. It's going to go to a public hearing, which if you're interested is going to be on March 27th. Um, more feedback, maybe some tweaking. And then if the um, select board approves, it's going to go to town meeting and it will be voted on there. It has to pass by a two thirds vote, just like any bylaw votes. And I hope you'll all support it. People are always nervous about affordable housing, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really mean anything bad. It's very small scale and mm -hmm. it really just means it would be affordable to people who, um, yeah. it doesn't mean we're gonna have all kinds of riffraff moving in. Yeah. yeah, there's a whole CPA budget just for housing. So there's a lot of funds there. So, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to let you know those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm supportive. Um. I, we did have another meeting of the um, for the shared conservation agent, um, I think last week, and uh, things are moving forward, it seems. So basically, we still haven't heard officially from the state about the grant proposal that went in, but they did come back to uh, the, the town administrator in Ashfield who sent in the proposal and asked whether we could make it work with a little bit less money. So it sounds like they're near the end of their decision making and that they're probably, you know, clip a little bit from the budget, but then give us, you know, maybe 80% of what we asked for. And uh, so we talked about it at the meeting and we feel like we can make it work with 80% of the money. 
in the budget would be a vehicle so that there would be a car for this person to drive around because they're going to be racking up a lot of miles and a computer and all the other things they need to get set up and it will pay their salary for the first year and it will then you know the, the, our town-wide contributions won't start until you know fy 26 um so not until july 1st of 2025 so that seems like a pretty good way to ramp up and and you know get a one year under our belt while we're making progress and getting all the towns to get it in their budgets and get it passed by town meeting and um you know i think there's a fair amount of enthusiasm from the the six towns that are yeah. part of this uh, shared agent great yeah it is great you got some good press i saw yeah, the the guy Paul from uh, from Ashfield has done a lot of work. I'm really thankful for Ashfield for being taking the lead on it mm -hmm. and writing the grant proposal. And you know they've had a lot of good support from their select board. And you know it you know it's been really um, you know it's it's been it's been really effective. You know the way that they pulled all these different towns together and 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 the people who are engaged are you know, very reasonable folks who are, seem to have the backing of their towns. So it really does look like it could happen. Well, good. Thanks. Thanks for all you're doing to move that along. Yeah. Been a long, a long drawn out <laughs> process since we first started talking about it. Yeah, so. no, it's true. And I wasn't all that confident that it would actually result yeah. in anything, but yeah. um, no, it did. And, and Patricia, I guess, the, who's a co-town administrator now for, mm -hmm until we find somebody, she was at the meeting too, remotely. And so she had some really good uh, suggestions about the uh, the document, the, the, uh, the I don't know, cooperative agreement, I guess, or whatever they called it, you know, where all the towns are gonna have to sign off on to commit to this, uh, this shared agent. So it's good, you know. Good. good. All right. Well, unless somebody's got something else that we should talk about, we can wrap it up and go get some dinner. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I second thanks for... that. <laughs> there you go. Um, right. Thanks for coming out. And, yep. uh, you know, we'll see you next month and probably we'll have something to, to discuss more than just chit chat and minutes. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.